The 18th century, which in Russian history is called the Age of Enlightenment, simultaneously combined an unprecedented burst of scientific and cultural development with the most barbaric slavery, which was simply called serfdom. In essence, these serfs were slaves who could be sold, traded, won at cards, and in other words, do to them pretty much anything as the owners pleased. Our world history is littered with many cases of inhuman treatment of serfs by their masters, landlords, and gentry. But the most famous out of all was Daria Saltikova, nicknamed shortly Saltichika. And exactly today we will tell you about who she is and her story. You're watching another episode on Flip Side of History. Her crimes only came to light when Peter III was overthrown and Catherine II was enthroned. The new empress decided to show her subjects that her rule would be both fair in human way and lawful. And very appropriate were the complaints of two serfs, your Malai Lin and Savelli Martinov. They complained about the insanities of the landlady Daria Saltikova. Lin complained that his landlady had murdered three of his wives in shifts. And it could not go on like this. The Empress immediately gave the command to conduct the most thorough of investigations. On Catherine the Great's order, the Moscow Justice Commission, in modern parlance the equivalent of the Criminal Investigation Department, took over the investigation. And the first results already astounded one might say without any exaggeration, the entire Russian Empire. It turned out that Daria Saltikova was suspected of the murders of almost 140 people over a period of six years. In high social circles, one of the most generous donors to the churches, spiritual, educated and enchanting noblewoman, in fact turned out to be a kind of model of the Nazi concentration camp guards in her homestead. And she did things so gruesome that to this very day some of the details of her deeds give shivers all over one's body. Daria Saltikova came from a rather well-to-do family of Kolomner, i.e. descendant, noblemen, the Ivanovs. According to some sources, Daria grew up as a quiet girl, was brought up in a monastery and was a God-fearing and rather modest girl. Then Daria was given in marriage quite successfully. The young woman became the wife of the rich and noble hereditary nobleman, Gleb Alexeyevich Saltikov. The young family had two sons and it seemed at first glance that life would go on quietly, peacefully and happily. Unfortunately, nevertheless, at the age of 26, the young Daria Nikolaevna Saltikova became a widow. Her husband died shortly afterwards, leaving his wife a huge fortune, several estates near Kostroma, Vologda and Moscow, a humongous house in the heart of Moscow, as well as no less than 1,200 serfs. Having become the richest widow around, Daria Saltikova might well have tried again to build her happiness, but she chose a different path in life, which was not so God-fearing as she used to show to others. According to some experts, the death of her husband or family circumstances, which will be discussed below, led to a severe psychological shock, which, in turn, caused the development of a serious illness, epileptoid psychopathy, which is characterized by fully unreasonable rage, a tendency to violence and severity. Originally, everything manifested itself quite standard for the norms of the time. The supposedly negligent servants were simply punished with a rod or a lash for a poorly done job. But after a while, Saltachika personally took part in the punishments, beating the unfortunate serfs with enjoyment. And the further on, the more devious the punishments invented by the mad landlady became. And it is easy to explain, no consequences for her actions whatsoever. Serfs are just serfs, at least for her. For the time being, the investigation materials describe cases where Daria beat peasants with logs, tore hair out of their heads, or set them on fire poured boiling water over serfs, used hot nippers to create an absolute hell for the rightless serfs. She starved the guilty and exposed them naked to the frost until they froze to death. But it was the young girls and women who were especially hated by Saltachika. This may be connected with failures in her own family life, so she couldn't stand the happiness of someone who is even lower than her by his status. According to a number of researchers, the late husband adored women with pudgy forms and healthy blush while Daria was thin and pale-faced. That is why her husband liked to go for a walk on the side, causing his lawful wife's fierce hatred of rivals. And this hatred stayed. The investigation showed that the majority of the victims of the deranged noblewoman were exactly women. For example, Saltachika loved to beat young brides to death right before their weddings. Pregnant women also could not feel safe, 
It is documented that Saltachika gave the order to beat a pregnant woman to death. Right during the torture, childbirth began, but the landowner not only did not stop, but began to demand to death, beat her to death. There were confirmed cases when Saltachika beat pregnant women in the abdomen until childbirth began, and when the unhappy mother died, she was taken to the cemetery, throwing her newborn baby on her chest, often alive, and the baby would just die of the cold on the way. As for Yermolai Lin's wives, investigators found that on Saltachika's order, the peasant's first wife was Ekaterina Semenova. The girl scrubbed the floors of the manor, was accused of not washing them properly, and was beaten to death by her mistress with lashes. After the funeral, Saltachika married Lin again some time later, this time to Fyodosia Artemonova, who also worked in Saltachika's house. The woman lived in the barracks for less than a year. The unfortunate one was also beaten to death. The unfortunate peasant's third wife also died of torture. It was to her that Elin had real feelings, which is why the death of his beloved forced the peasant to file a complaint. By the way, the young maids who came to work in Saltachika's house usually died from beatings and torture within half a month. The mad mistress did not give them even the slightest chance for life. The most recent death, according to the inquiry, occurred in the approximate summer of 1762, when Fekla Gerasimova died. The body was taken to the cemetery by Ivan Mikhailov, who testified that the body bore traces of extreme torture, with such details like burnt hair and more. Incidentally, Saltachika usually attacked her peasant women from behind. At first, she would watch the girl or woman working for some time, and then she would pounce with beastly viciousness. Despite clear interference from one of Saltachika's high guardians, it was officially and fully proven that Daria Saltikova was responsible for the deaths of at least 38 people. In another 26 deaths, Saltachika remained a suspect. The most concerning thing is that during the investigation, Daria did not show the slightest bit of remorse, since probably that deep feeling was long gone, and even the imitation of the expected torture did not even make the former noblewoman confess to her crimes. After the conclusions of the inquiry were laid on the desk of Catherine II, the fate of the mad noblewoman was determined by the Empress personally. Saltachika was originally sentenced to death, but some time later the sentence was changed. Darya Nikolaevna Saltikova was sentenced to life imprisonment in a monastery's underground cell with the right to light a fire only during meals. The sentence was pronounced on October 2, 1768. Within the paper, unbelievable for the time, Saltikova was explicitly referred to as not human being. Having studied the report submitted to us by the Senate on the criminal cases of the well-known inhuman widow Daria Nikolaeva's daughter, we found that this ugly breed of mankind. As a result, this woman was deprived of her title of nobility and even in court was deprived of the right to use her husband's last name. All of her property was given to her sons. The former noblewoman was then tied to a pole in St. Petersburg with a tablet on her chest with two nicknames, torture and murder. Any citizen of the city or the whole state could come up and express his or her contempt toward her. After her public degrading, Saltachika was exiled to a nunnery, where she was confined for the first 11 years in a so-called penance cell. Later, Saltachika was transferred to a cell with a window. And to see through this window came hundreds, if not tens of hundreds of people. According to the recollections of contemporaries, most of them damned the saddest and spat in the window. In all, Saltachika lived in prison for almost 33 years. Saltikova Darya Nikolaevna died at the age of 71 years old on 27th of November, 1801. And by the way, the paradox of our human history is that her grave in the cemetery of the Donskoy Monastery survives to this very day. Moreover, according to some historians in Moscow, on the site of the former house of Saltachika later was built an infamous building on Lubyanka, the Committee of State Security. Thank you for watching this episode on Flip Side of History. Watch our other videos and do not hesitate to leave a like.